Back for a third interview, I'm talking to Daniel Hyder of TTR Sotheby's International Realty in Washington, D.C. For those of you who don't know Daniel yet, he is the Washington Capital Region's wonderkind of real estate. In short, he's been in business for just seven years and has quickly reached unmatched levels of success. This does not exclude his well over 100 million in sales each year. In our first interview, episode 174, we talked about how to break through your perceived limits. In our second interview, episode 203, we talked about how to grow at warp speed in a way that serves your clients. Today, with almost, or by now, over two and a half million followers on TikTok and a measly almost 50,000 followers on Instagram, this time, we could not not bring him back and talk about how to 100x your social media. Thanks for listening to the Jerry Metcalf podcast, where top real estate agents tell how they do it. This podcast was created for real estate agents across the country to come together sharing ideas to take your, their, and our business to the next level. All right, everybody. It is the Jerry Metcalf Podcast. We're top real estate agents to how they do it. And today we have Daniel Hyder in Washington, D.C. He is back for a third interview. And that is because he has some really good information that I was like, Daniel, we keep talking, but we've got to give more. Before I give you that, I want to give you guys a little update on Daniel. He has and has recently listed the most expensive listing in, I believe it's Virginia. It's 75 million. He closed in 2020. It is officially now over 150 million. And just one more little, one more little nugget or plug. You have a listing that has just been on the front page of the Wall Street Journal mansion in print. And it was at 250 Massachusetts Avenue on Embassy Row, by the way. For those of you who don't know that is, where that is, should we share? Evolved? Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, um, it's basically the gateway into um, the, 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 the diplomatic um, residences in Washington. So uh, aside from the embassy of this and that, then, you know, multiple countries, Italy, South Africa, I mean, you name it. Um, it's also home to the vice presidential compound. Uh, the Obamas live there. The Clintons live there. Uh, members of the Trump family live there. Um, Rex Tillerson lives there. Jeff Bezos lives there. It's a very prominent uh, enclave in, in, in Washington. So it was really cool to participate. What's, in the list, what's the list price on it? Can you? It's listed for $5.5 million. Nice. I mean, it's a beautiful Bohart so revival. It's yeah. just stunning. Well, welcome. Thank you for coming back again. Thank you for having me. I always love being on your show and I, you always just make me feel so good. Well, back at you, Daniel. I mean, you were like the king of making me feel good and everybody feel good. You're so much fun. That is really like your biggest secret sauce besides the fact that you're accountable and amazing at what you do. Um, today, everybody, we're going to talk about, we, we touched on this, but Daniel's social media marketing and social media marketing. If you go onto TikTok and type in real estate, Daniel and his team come up at the top. I've tested, I told my friends, they were like, no way. They test like every time. Two million followers, the most followers of any real estate agent on TikTok. And another example on Instagram, you've got like, is it 40 or over 40,000? We've, we've got almost, actually, I'm looking at my Instagram counter, which is, which is right here. Uh, and we just uh, gained a follower a second ago. We're at, 46,394 um, as of a second ago. So we're, so we're approaching for, 50. Is that like a like 49,000 what again? We had 46,394. And you'll hear a little tick, tick, tick while we do this podcast. And that's each following. Oh gosh, I love that. It's I mean, pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Unfortunately, we don't have this counter for TikTok yet. I, I don't know if the company makes it, but uh, we should because it's really cool. We've been growing by... Uh, almost 100,000 followers a week on TikTok. So right now we have uh, 2.4 million followers. And uh, uh, what's crazy about it is that we are actually the most followed 
uh, TikTok account in the world um, for real estate, uh, which is just unbelievable. That is unbelievable. So tell us like that kind of thing isn't just luck. There's a little more to it. What do we need to know? What can we learn from you? Gosh, um, you know, it was a, it was a, it was an opportune time. Right. And, and I think that if you look back in history, you'll see that, you know, early adopters are the ones that are getting rewarded. Um, I have to be honest with you. I mean, when I was initially, uh, sort of thinking about TikTok in general, I'm thinking to myself, this is just a bunch of little girls that are doing belly dances, you know, mm. like with these little dances that they do, right? Um, which are cute, you know, but, but, um, but, 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 but I was, I was definitely um, uh, wrong in my, in my blanketed assumption that TikTok is, you know, just a, um, you know, kind of a, an app to, to, to dismiss and, and take serious, not take seriously rather. So um, what I learned is that there were a, a, a vast amount of people, people who I follow, celebrities that I like, you know, Barbara Corcoran is on TikTok. She's got a really great following. I think she's got like 300,000 followers. She's really funny. She shows her Barbara family. Barbara Corcoran has 3,000, but you have 2 million. I mean, or 2 million something. Two, four, yeah. Uh, two, four. Ryan four. Last time we spoke a month ago, it was 2 million, by the way. I mean, just everybody yeah. gets that in a reference. Like, and now yeah. it's 2, four. Ryan, Ryan Serhant, I think he has like 70,000 followers. Um, you know, so it's pretty crazy. I mean, you know, the way that I like to think about it, um, which, which is kind of mind boggling is that um, I heard recently that the smartphone is today uh, to, to, to us, what the television was to our parents and, and what, you know, the, you know, the radio was to our, our grandparents. And, exactly. and, so, and so what's interesting about that, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this and you, Jer, can probably relate, you know, I'll, at the end of a workday, I'll get in front of my TV and intend to watch an episode of Bridgerton or what something that I've been meaning to watch. And I'm constantly interrupted by being on my phone. We are all consumers mm -hmm. on this day. So, it's amazing. Um, yeah. so, so, so what's cool to think about is, you know, um, if, if the, if the mobile device is now our television, well, then these various applications like Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or LinkedIn, those are the channels on the television. And so, you know, it's what's what the way that we're thinking about it is we're dominant on one of those channels right now for our industry. And, and what's been so cool to see Jer is that the, 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 the vision that we had to really capture some of these properties in this immersive sort of lifestyle marketing is now being, you know, copied and replicated throughout the world. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm now seeing literally exactly verbatim our content copied, not only in our market, but in, in all over the world, in Los Angeles, in New York. I mean, with, with the stabilizer and doing these tours and trying to include people in the cars. And, you know, uh, I don't know necessarily if, if we were the first by fact, but I can tell you we, we created enough content and we were, you know, consistent enough with that content that we gained traction at a moment in time where the entire world, you know, was joining TikTok en masse. And that was, you know, really at the beginning of the pandemic. So- Which wasn't uh, long ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, and, and what's interesting is that our, our Instagram account was, we were growing rapidly before our TikTok page. I think it's important to also add um, that this time last year, we did not have a TikTok account. And this time last year, we did not have an Instagram account. So, you know, uh, what's, wow. what, what's, what's interesting, I think I, I, it may have been November. So we, we might've had the uh, Instagram account for maybe a month or two. I'll have to check that, uh, but more or less, you know, our account was growing on, on Instagram. And then when we sort of took off on TikTok, um, you know, we got this incredible cross of users um, that were following us um, from, uh, from TikTok onto Instagram and, and it just sort of- So it having a strong, tick, so was it being an early adopter on TikTok that, did that feed your Instagram account? Definitely. Or at what point did Definitely. your Instagram account grow so much? Definitely, no. I mean, it, it, you know, people, people are, are interested in knowing who the people are behind, you know, the TikTok account. And so it's not, it's not you know, irregular 
of one of our followers to, you know, to, to, to look up, you know, who, who we are on Instagram and follow us there, or if they have a certain affinity for one of our team members to follow us, you know, on, on our own personal accounts. Um, and, and what I see so much of, and what I love so much about it is, is the global connectivity that we have with people from all around the world. I mean, I have, I receive messages on a daily basis, numerous times a day on all platforms from people who just want to talk. They want to talk about, you know, an opportunity, or they want to talk about breaking through somewhere. They want to get an idea for how to market themselves, or they just want to chat over the phone. And it's almost like, I mean, I, 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 I should set up a separate office just to, just to talk to the people that are wanting to communicate well, with us. So a few questions, like um, we'll go back. So I'm thinking about, you know, you say, well, we're just an early ad adopter, but a lot of people are, they're not all number one on TikTok and they're not all getting 40,000 followers on Instagram. What's the difference between you and them? Well, you know, I think, look, I'm, I'm, there's a, there's a truth, there, there, there's a fact that there's an organic algorithm that are unencumbered, that is unencumbered on TikTok rather than Instagram and Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Instagram and Facebook, they're so well-trained to show you things that you only want to interact with, that you're never gonna see the full breadth of, of, of everything out there. And TikTok, that's not the case. Um, yeah. It's becoming less and less the case. Um, but when we sort of wedged ourselves into um, the real estate space on TikTok and, and, and started putting out, you know, piece after piece after piece, um, you know, it just exploded. I mean, we wow. have certain videos that have 11 million you know, uh, views, 11 million, some 12, 11 million and 12 million views. Um, and we have over 30 million likes across, um, you know, all of our, all of our content. So, I mean, so, so, so to answer your question, I think part two of answering your question is creating content that's, that's interesting and that's fun. Um, you know, we, 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 we initially started to kind of repurpose professional video collateral that we had built um, where, you know, we put it through, you know, video editing software and speed it up and make the lights flash a little bit more and have a model walk through and put some Nicki Minaj on it, just kind of make it fun. You know, I mean, we just wanted it to be fun. And I, and, and I think where people miss, miss the mark is that they're so obsessed with trying to make things perfect and they're not thinking about how to just make somebody have fun and how to just be, how to just be enjoyable, you know? And, and so much of, of, of what, we do, you and I, Jer, as, as um, yeah. you know, lead gen folks, is we just try to be relatable and be fun. I mean, I can be that guy who uh, leads my client to a successful transaction in an up market. And I can also be that guy at the, you know, at the barbecue that, you know, can get down. And, and I'm not afraid to, to laugh. And we're not afraid to show our personality. And we're not afraid to show people that, hey, you can buy this $5 million mansion and you can float on a big giant rubber ducky in the backyard to some crazy music, you know, and it, and it works and it worked for yeah. us. Oh, that's awesome. And it's really just authenticity, being fun. And I think a lot of people too, they want to stand out. It, it's no secret that today, almost to too much of an extreme, if you're just different, you can get a lot of attention. You do it in such a refreshing, positive way though. And you're, it doesn't, I mean, clearly it's not hurting you. Um, any advice on what you kind of touched on it, but what is fun? And then I've got some more to add to that. But like when you guys are brainstorming, I mean, you've got a, you're selling over 150 million a year, mm -hmm. and not with a ginormous team, no like, the vocabulary there. But you, you know, with with a moderate sized team, I mean, you guys have I can't remember, is it three or four we, agents? We have we have four salespeople, including myself, on the 150 team. million. And you've got the, this, you're basically like doing, you, how do you manage that? The time, let, me, let, me, the let, let me tell you this, let me tell you yeah. this. Let me, give you, let me give you some advice. And I feel like some of the best advice that I've been giving is uh, yeah. that I've received um, has been so simple, right? It's like most exactly. marketing professionals and people in the lead gen business, they've got it, you know, they, they, they've got it all there, but it's those little pieces 
those little fibers that sometimes need to be connected to really boom, you know, awaken uh, folks to, to what's really going to work. And, 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 you know, I think you just have to, you, you, can say that you, again. Have, to do, you yeah. have to do what works for you and what, and what's truthful to you. And Sean knows my marketing yes. director, you know, I will, I will be on the treadmill or be in my car and a certain song will come on and I'll just, I'll just be like, Oh, this is, this is, this is hot. Like, I, this, this, yes, like, I love this song. And then I'm thinking in my mind, wouldn't it be awesome to have like, you know, the, the, the drone flying over Chateau de Lune and like the pool changing colors and then it doing a transition and then like, like, you know, a, a model walking down the stairs quickly. You know I mean? I just think like that. And so I would, say, I would say to you, JR, next time you're in your car or next time whoever hypothetically is listening to this, is in your car or you're doing whatever you do to get hyped up for your day, to bring that energy, you know, if it's a song, if it's a thing, think about how you can sort of cross pollinate that with what we do professionally. Because chances are, if you like it, there's gotta be a lot of people out there that like it. And, and so that's really how a lot of this stuff is born. Oh. Who and then I'm gonna go back to some more technical questions. But who's are you, who's hopping on the computer and doing all of this editing? Because what you're saying is, it's like, look, you've got to just be creative. Know the you you've got videos of listings. There are videos of there are videos everywhere. There's video. There's collateral video. Mm -hmm. you, whatever you want to use, B-roll, your existing stuff, your selfie stuff. It's everywhere. Just sitting down, pu putting it together in your mind and making it reality. Who's making it reality? Who's doing the uh, editing? That's Sean New my marketing director, who is absolutely, I mean, uh, I'm, I, I have so much respect for him. You know, I think, uh, God, I'm gonna butcher this, but you know, I think, it was, I think it was Steve Jobs that said, I don't hire the smartest people in the world to tell them what to do. I hire the smartest yep, people Steve in the Jobs. world to tell me what to do. And, and you know, and, and, and I have to say, you know, Amid what's happening right now in our world with COVID, I know that there are a lot of folks out there that are young. Uh, maybe they're in college, they're doing their classes online. They didn't have the graduation ceremony that they wished for. They, they, they feel like their hope is lost, you know, to get a real job. Uh, and and I, I have to say, you know, Sean started off as an intern for me um, and he was really a personal assistant. And, you know, after a couple of months of him you know, sort of being in that role uh, and, and sort of, I, I, I had him start our Instagram account and just sort of help with various marketing tasks. I very quickly learned that his highest and best use was in that marketing capacity. And we were talking about it today. He's a finance major. You know, this is a guy who went to school to study numbers and to study math. And, 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 I, and I don't really think that you know you know, really what you're, what you're good at until you're really in the real world. And, and I think that I, I got lucky because not only did I uh, get the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to, to find Sean and, uh, and, and work with him, but I was, um, you know, I was looking for those hidden talents. And, and when he, you know, hit his stride, I, I was just kind of dumping gasoline on his fire. So I encourage him and he encourages me um, and, and we have this really awesome sort of symbiosis where, um, you know, we just, we just kind of feed off of each other. I see things that he doesn't and he sees things that I don't. And, um, and he's, he's always, what I love about Sean is that, you know, um, he takes my direction very seriously, uh, in, in that, you know, as, as you know, there are a lot of people out there that are, you know, trying to replicate what it is that we're doing. And certainly in, in this market, oh my God. I mean, I cannot even tell you how many people, when I go on Instagram and I'm looking at the other sort of teams that are in the space at other firms, they are literally doing, trying to do exactly what we do. So Sean is always kind of a couple steps ahead and, and, and whether, it's, exactly. whether it's like, you know, uh, editing it to be a little bit more crafty. I know we had this listing in Georgetown that was super modern, uh, that, that had been listed by another, another team and they couldn't get it sold. Um, and we took over the listing. Um, we ended up selling it for full price, by the way, after we took it over without adjusting the, the price, by the way, because of our marketing. That was one of the, the, the highest um, viewed videos. What part of your marketing did that? I'm sorry? Was it, was it, what part of it? Was it the video? Was it the- was It was, it the, so, so what was cool about it is that, you know, um, it, they, the developer did these really cool 
LED lights that you could change the colors on. Um, and, and so when Sean and I looked at that, we were thinking to ourselves, like, we're just going to make this so optically fanciful. And so Sean was adjusting the lights so quickly and, and, you know, and did this incredible tour on, on the stabilizer and sped it up and made it look in incredible. And, and then we're thinking about it and, you know, we could have done like a very sort of standard stock, oh, boring right. song, you know, but we put, we put Nicki Minaj on top of it, you know, so sorry. and okay. it, was, it was, it was awesome. And it was fun. And because it was great to all of our listeners, because notice we're going from social media to like more and more and just marketing, creative marketing, because tell me, but the biggest answer on social media, everybody like wants to be liked on social media and they're doing bizarre, crazy things to get the attention. Mm -hmm. But we're backing up and going, hey, like it's actually value and creativity and what's gets people, what, what does that? But in doing this, that one example, first of all, what would, can you share the property address with us that everybody? Yeah, has? yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, 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 it's it's on R Street. Um, I I forget the numeric off the top of, but if you if you go to my TikTok account, if you go to Hyder underscore Real Estate on TikTok and you scroll down, it is you, you can't miss it. It's the it's the most flashy one that we have. It's white and the the the, the colors are changing really quickly. I think we did two okay. or three of those videos, but you should check it out because it's like. Well, you know, I, I think, I think also, you know, to answer your question, like what can other people be doing to like build this kind of, um, reaction from their followership, uh, their followers. Um, and, and I feel like you gotta know that you're going to, you, you, you want to step into the listing with a different vision. Right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and a lot of people like to follow the pack so closely that they lose their individuality. They lose the, the it thing. They lose the thing that is unique to them, right? I mean, I can guarantee you in Washington, DC, in the most conservative market ever with, with, with politicians and global leaders and you know, A-type people, business people, very serious people, you know, throwing a Nicki Minaj song on a real estate video was a risk, right? Right. And, 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 I, and I have to tell you, you know, I think that that's what our edge is, is that we're not, we're not afraid. We're not afraid to do things that are a little different. And, and, and by the way, we're not gonna throw a Nicki Minaj song on, if, if any of my clients are listening, we're not gonna throw a Nicki Minaj song over your you know, colonial house in, in, in uh, Bethesda. You're gonna you do know, it but, where it's important. And that's an important message. You do it where it fits. You do absolutely. it like, You don't wear a cocktail dress to a picnic. Exactly, Jer, speak to him. Say that again. About it. You like, do not wear it. a cocktail dress. Yes, that's exactly right. We're not going to do that. You know what I was Don't saying? Don't worry, we're not going to wear a picnic attire yes. to the cocktail party either. Yeah, exactly. We're going to wear the most fabulous cocktail attire to the cocktail party. Exactly. You know what? It's a cold January day in Atlanta, Georgia, ladies and gentlemen. We see, I see a cow neck. You know, I, I, the jewelry cashmere, is appropriate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, you have to take that lens when you're approaching these listings. Exactly. And, and, and so... I was, and it's so funny because I, sometimes I have a hard time articulating myself to Sean because it's just something that I feel. And I'll look at him and I'll be like, my leg will be bouncing up and down and I'll kind of be like scratching my head. And I'll be like, you know, like, like, you know, I came to him a couple of weeks ago and I told him, I was like, there is this John Mayer song that I love so much. And, 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 and I wonder if we can repurpose some of the video from Mount Ida, which is the, the um, listing that we have for $75 million in Charlottesville. I wonder mm -hmm. if we can, you know, like I imagine, I imagine, you know, this sort of riff in the song playing as the sun is setting and those Clydesdales are reaching down to grab a mouthful of grass and, and, and the, you know, the, I mean, like, like, like that's just how we're seeing things. So, you know, yes, there's a time and a place for Nicki Minaj to step on the scene. And there's a time and a place for there to be a, you know, a beautiful, um, you know, melody playing and, you know, and, and kind of the, the blades of grass, grass just kind of wafting. You, okay, so to your point, the best movies, the best pieces like media always hit every emotion. So in your marketing, you're hitting the exciting, the fun, the flashy, the emotional, the moving. Mm -hmm. Like when you know how to hit all of those appropriately, that's where you really capture your audience. 
Well, I agree with that. And, and you know, and you have to show, you, I, I like, I love to show range. I'm just and, reading what you said, by the way. So I hope you agree with it or tell me if you don't. because No, just, I do. I completely approve. I completely the, approve. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, isn't that the most important thing though in our, in our, in our, in our yeah. field though? Because listen, unless you're selling only one building or only one neighborhood or only one jurisdiction, uh, you know, even you, know, if you, you need to have a range because you know, in, even in, if you in, are, you need to have a more of a range to keep the neighborhood and your specialty interesting. Definitely, definitely. And people, and you know what, you know what, I mean, there is, there is a truth to having people talk about you, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and, and let me, and let me tell you, let me tell you the most amazing thing, you know, right. so on Saturday, I have like all these questions that keep writing down for you, just FYI, but oh, keep, cool. going, keep going, keep going. Well, get to What's the question. I want to answer your questions. You, you, no, 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 you, no, no. you have a story. Question. You have a story. You have to tell the story first. First, tell the story. I was just going to say, you know, this weekend, I'm showing a family a three and a half million dollar home. Uh, and I met her from TikTok. And I met her because her kids were like, mom, I know that you, you want to sell the house. I know you want to sell the house. Awesome. Like, you have to show, you have to call the, these folks, right? And so That's we got awesome. the call. I'm Justin, my managing partner, who's on every phone call that I'm on, he's always taking notes, always keeping me, uh, you know, in order, is on the call. They met us through TikTok. Um, they were such big fans. They were like, you know, you're famous here. You know, everybody, all the kids are talking about you. You know, everyone's talking about you. Oh, my God, and that's and, the best. And, and you know what? And, and so it, it's actualizing monetarily. But what's so great, and what I, what I feel even more proud of, Jer, it's not the amount of followers. It's not, it's not, it, it's not even about the showing to, you know, this weekend. But what I think is so great is that our business has been diversified now to an audience of millions of people, mostly younger people, and they're gonna grow with us. And you know what? If, it, and yeah. if TikTok doesn't work, if it's obsolete in a couple of years, guess what? They're going to follow us on another platform. On the relationship, are, they're still there. And there's still, there's still, you know, intrinsic brand value um, in, in in that. So I think that's just that that's a really great component of it. Okay, so now I'm going to get like some little technical questions Let's do it. that I know they're on everybody's minds. Like we are talking about Mickey Minaj and. Uh, Mickey Minaj is the name that I remember. And that should be the title of this podcast, by the way. This you know is, what? You know what? You know what? You know what, Jer? I uh, challenge you right now. Okay. Uh, we're, you and I, we're going to do a little field experiment together live okay. right now. Okay. Oh, got it. Here's what I want to do I want you to name you. this Look, podcast. So ADD. Just I, like want you to, I want you to name this podcast like something insane because you know why? Because it's going to capture the attention of people. And you know what? The, the, the most important thing is getting attention. You go, we go where the attention is. Well, you know, that, and, and that's what happened on TikTok. That's good. And you're, it's all, it's now, everybody talks about, it's the competition for the attention. Well, listen, and, and there are a Everything lot of distractions out there. So if you, can, if you can really be giving your community, whether you have 10 followers, or you have 10,000 followers, if you can be giving them something that they enjoy, that's that's awesome. And this is a great way. So first of all, everybody's going, well, like if I'm going to have a following like Daniel, I've got to have Daniel's mind. Not necessarily, but don't ever. Here's the question. This wasn't the original question. What would you name this podcast? God, I'd probably name it something like, you know, uh, how how Nicki Minaj can 10x your business. Ooh, that's it. That's the name. I mean, how you know, like, 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 you know, how, 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 you know, how, you know, I mean, you know, like, uh, you know, a, 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 and then the subtext would be, you know, a conversation on innovative marketing with Daniel Hyder. So, 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 See, there's, so a, there's a limit, there's a limit thing going on with the, However you want to, however you want to match, however you want to match it up. But you know what? You know, we're, this is, we're, we're all about marketing today, right? Yes. So one of the things, one of the things that I see a lot um, are people who send out emails with very boring uh, subject lines. Like you, I challenge you guys to think about your email subject lines. Like, 
you know, we all at Sotheby's have the, the uh, you know, the, the monthly mm -hmm. newsletter, right? Like, do mm -hmm. not send that newsletter out with the, with the, the, the coined, Can like- a high five? Yes. They like, yes. Hi, thank you. Yes. So everybody just did a virtual high five on Zoom. Absolutely. Like, you, know, we, you, know, you, know, you know what we always do? And, and Sotheby's is so great because they give you all this amazing content. Like, you know, there was, there was once that was like, uh, like uh, Basquiat painting sells for a hundred million dollars, if I'm paraphrasing. And, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, sells whatever. And then like, and, and so I'll go through that mailer and I'll say like, you know, like how sneaker heads and uh, like how sneaker heads, multimillionaire shoe collectors um, and the best homes in Washington, you know, relate to one another. You know, or, or something crazy. Like it will, it will be something that I want people to read. You know, it's, it's relevant to. But the thing is, like, you want to compete for attention, the right, right attention. You're getting the right attention. Right. Back to like, it's not just an attention game. It's important you're getting the right attention. Like the kids who got mom to hire you. Like by the way, definitely. Like one of the best ways to do anything is get mom and dad committed to what the kids want. Absolutely. Like in today's world. Well, like, and then, and you, then you gotta, and then you gotta follow up in real, and then you gotta live up to that, right? Oh so, yeah. So, Earlier, remember I said you're accountable, like beginning of the interview. That's exactly right. Yeah. Happened. So yeah. you know what happened? I got, I got the call. I was actually in Miami when I got the call, and and Justin was here in DC, and and what happened is we sent them. I had my assistant run out to their home in Potomac with. Uh, two Hyder uh, branded baseball caps and a big box of Levan chocolate chip cookies and a bottle of Camus for mom and dad and, and a handwritten note that said, thank you so much for thinking of us. We hope to live up to your expectations and we look forward to meeting you in person soon. You know, that, that absolutely just like, they are, are they're going to be our clients for life. We have a great rapport with them. And like how, like, remember you said earlier, like in putting things together and making them great, it's this, people think they've got to do some great, grand, impossible thing. Mm -mm. And you just said something anybody can do. It's the small little gestures. It's the smallest little adjustments that make the most powerful impacts. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, think about it when you're, when you're at a great hotel, I'm inspired by hospitality and service. I'm obsessed with yeah. it. And actually, I can't, I, 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 I choose to spend my free time in environments that are outside of the city, sort of off campus, if you will. Yeah. Um, I can never really rest here. And when I go to those other yeah. places, you know, and I, and I check into a great hotel, and there's a, just a little thing that they've picked up. It was a, Maybe it was something that I said in passing to the Bellman that they realized that I like or that I miss. And then all of a sudden there's a photo and this has happened by the, by the way, you know, of my dog in my room in a, in a picture frame, right? Or there's, you know, a, um, you know, there's a certain uh, recipe that I, 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 in passing that people are picking up that they hear that I like. And then all of a sudden the chef sends a note to the room that says, I, I understand that you love you know, chocolate chip pancakes, we're going to send you our famous chocolate chip pancakes in the morning. That costs that company absolutely nothing. Yeah. Negligible sum of money. Negligible. What that does is build this unbelievable connection that you'll never forget. And it will be very, very hard for you to try to go to another place and, and, and experience the same way that you felt in that instance. So we are trying to do that every single day in, in, in our world in real estate. And, and I think it, you just gotta listen. You have to listen for those things. You, you know, I mean, sending chocolate chip cookies to somebody is a really simple thing. You know, sending a little logo hat to a kid to say, thanks for hooking me up with mom and dad is a really simple thing, but you have to give a damn. You have to think about it. Yeah, you do. And circling that in because I think some people are listening oh, well I thought we were going to listen to like how to 10x my social media or mm -hmm. whatever but that's exactly how when you're doing your social media give a damn about what you're posting like really like I don't have nearly the following you do but my team laughs hysterically in my obsession with what we put out there and not and, and to that give a damn but it's about being you not being perfect definitely I always say to people like 
the things that you think make you imperfect are actually what make you so freaking awesome. Absolutely. Most of the time. Absolutely. Most of the time, the things that you think are your weaknesses or your strengths, the world gives Definitely. you, it, but it's up to you to receive them. Back to you in the car, you're having ideas, you're thinking them. That's like whatever everybody wants to call it, divine intervention, the forest yeah. God, name it what you want, but that's like speaking to you and it's up to you to receive that and manifest it into the world and look Definitely. at what you've made of it. You know, thank you. Thank you for saying that. It, it, it feels, it feels really, feel, feels really good to, um, to, to get so many amazing comments and to have attention of people, you know, I mean, to think, I, I, I try to quantify, it's a, it's a bit strange to me when I think about trying to quantify how many people 2.4 million people is. Like, that is, how many stadiums of people do you think that is? I don't really like, know. I mean, I don't know either. I'm asking, I don't know. That's like, like, I grew up, you know, this isn't, but like, the population in Atlanta is like, what's like, if I'm quote this wrong, I'm going to be mortified, but I think it's, <laughs> Atlanta, right? And so that's like, but that's a, that's a huge city. Co you know, colleges, and, and colleges are like big colleges are like 30,000. Exactly. And you know what? Like and that's you know, like how and many you know big universities. And, and, and I know that, we just, I know that we just, I know that we're talking about it in the instance of my followers, but if you, if you also sort of take the approach of, of, of the wonder of even having 10 followers, if you've been having 10 people, if you're having 10 people's attention for the things that you post, that's amazing too. And, and, and so, you know, so, so, so you should, you should, you, you should try to give to those people and, and definitely try to comment as much as you can. You know, if you go to, if you go to my personal Instagram account, yeah. um, just, you know, uh, just on my own personal Instagram page, Instagram page, you know, you'll see, I have never, ever not replied to a comment. That was one of my questions. So let's get to, let's get to the questions. Like we're just interrupting the hell out of each other, which I love because we're so excited. I'm like, okay, we have such talking. good flow together, you and keep me. Keep talking, but I have a question. Oh no, 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 but talk <laughs> to you. But now I have a question. You can ask me anything. And I want to thank everybody like who's listening to this or will be listening to this. Like what your questions are as we listen. So let's go into some questions. Let's do it. All of these people, you know, some of your stuff you've said is a little bit. I've heard Gary V. Who's got like he's like my age, I'm older than you, who got a huge following. He says this a little bit like, in your following and your people that are coming, you've got to engage. How do you control that? When you've got, you want to keep, you love every single one. Like you said, if you have three, you love them. Otherwise they won't grow. Right. As they grow, how do you continue to consistently and for lack of a better word, or to not, so it's sensitive, but how do you efficiently like keep that connectivity to two point? Four million people. Well, well, the answer, the real answer, Jer, is that it's a work in progress, and we're still trying to figure that out. Um, you know, there but are still answering all of them. You know, there, 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 there are sometimes. You know, we we market seven days a week, um, so there is content going out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, every day, every single day. Are they all different or are they all the same? Sometimes they're different. Sometimes they're, they're similar, um, you know, and, and so trying to keep up with all of those comments and all of the, of those likes, yeah. and I'm, not, I'm not trying to, I mean, it's a blessing that this is a laborious thing, but it is a laborious thing nonetheless to try to keep up with all of that. And so, you know, what we're trying to figure out right now is, is how to give that audience what they really want. And, and in analyzing the amount of questions and comments that we get on a daily and weekly and monthly basis, mm -hmm. we are developing a strategy to reach out to those people. So we're gonna start doing TikTok Lives very soon uh, where I can answer questions directly to people, right? Where I can give people the stage for a minute and talk to them, right? Awesome. We're gonna start directing people to um, the Clubhouse app where I can open a room and people can ask me questions. We can sort of, you know, uh, we, can, we can rap with each other. We can, we can talk about things that are cool. We can, we can you know, we can help each other. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, it's an evolving thing. It's, look, I, I, am, I am not the best at replying to every single person on TikTok because frankly, it's a lot. Um, and I, I really believe that one day, um, you know, I will have 
uh, a marketing team that works exclusively for me and my team that Sean is heading, um, where we have you know multiple employees that make sure that not ever a comment is ever left unattended, um, and and that we're constantly you know giving back to the people who give us this stage. So you know it's a work in progress. So there's a lot of talk in the social media world about tags, hashtags, what you say, targeted marketing, who you put it in front of. Do you advertise? Do you not? Any anything to share that we should know about that? Yeah, I think hashtags are helpful. Um, you know, especially if if you're if you're trying to target a certain audience, right? I mean, if if you know, are you? Yeah. Oh, de definitely. Yeah. I mean. Um, you know, lux hashtag luxury listing, hashtag hider, hashtag estate, hashtag, you know, I mean, money, hashtag, you know, so, luxury. Okay. Hashtag the, what, I think there's like this idea out there when you hear people, they're like, you just got to get the hashtags right. And then all of a sudden, like, you'll have a million trillion people, but it's you know, not, it I don't know if I, you know, I think that there are so many, there are so many things that are right, you know? Yeah. And, 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 so, and, and, and even with us, like, just because we have the most, the biggest following on, on, on the app for our, our you know, um, our industry doesn't mean that, you know, I mean, that we're constantly learning. We're trying to figure it out too, because it's, things are evolving and morphing and shifting so fast that, you know, if, if you're not up to speed, you, you know, you, it can be easy to, to get left behind or fall behind. And, 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 you know, you know, most people that aren't on these apps, they're just, they just don't understand them. They, they just don't, the, the creating the content is an intimidating thing to them. They just don't know what to do. You know, I was on vacation. A lot of people on them don't my, know what to do either, by the way. Like, was that? Vacation. A lot of people already on them don't know what to do with them either. Yeah. You know, you know, you know on vacation. One, of, one of my best friends, I was just on vacation with her last week in Miami. And, um, and she is like, she is one of the most fabulous people in the world. And um, I mean, I, I was. Think, her just life is so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. She, her fashion is, is so incredible and her mindset is so wonderful and her soul is so pure. And I just yeah. genuinely love her. And I told her for years, I was like, look, Oxenia, you have to get on Instagram. And she's, she's Ukrainian. She's like, no, 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 dearling. I don't do it. I don't do it, dearling. It's not for me. And then of course she gets on Instagram yeah. and, and she has so much fun with it. And she plays and she shows people the world through her eyes. And, and that's the fun thing is that, you know, you are who you show people you are. But she's and on that, You know what she said to me last week? What? She said to me, she said, you know, when you were telling me to get on Instagram, I just didn't know how to create the content. And now I know how to create the content and the game has changed. And what, and how did she figure that out? What was it for her? She just tried. You know, she just that. started. You yeah. know, and, and, you know, some, some people may look at some of her early content as, and laugh and be like, huh, like that, bro, that photo was blurry or, you know, this was kind of not edited perfectly, you know, but she started, she yeah. did something and you want to know what <laughs> My, I, I actually, um, she loves Sean, big surprise. And Sean loves her and Sean introduced her to a couple of different pointers and she's been using them. And, and she's so much fun. She's private, by the way, so you can't follow her. But, but, but she's so much fun. And I just think of her, she's, you know, I just, I think of her in this context because I think there are a lot of people out there that are like Oxenia, that they yeah. want to have a TikTok channel. They want to have an Instagram channel. They want to be on all these platforms. They just don't know how. Well, I think people, and I'm going to ask you another question, but I think people see it as like, this is something I can fail at. You can't fail at it. And then for those of us who are in it, like, how do you take it better and level it up? Get more interesting. Don't be afraid to be you and not conform in so much to what everybody. Well, you know what? Actually, you can fail at it. And, and I think that that's okay. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you can make a shitty piece of content that looks like garbage, yeah. you know, and, but, yeah. but you know what? I mean, yeah. but, but learn from it. If you're, if you don't get the engagement, you like ask yourself a question, like, what Thank was it? Like, like we do, like we do, you know, look, some of our videos only get like a hundred thousand views and Sean and I are like, Hmm, like why, why is it Wait, that, that they only get a hundred thousand views? Like, well, in the con in the context, yeah. in the context, I, I'm not trying to, I, I'm, I'm just, I love it. Keep in, going. Keep in the con that. context of, of, right. So and, you and, fail. So, and so, and so, and so, right. you know what, 
And you know what we found? We found that sometimes those aha moments of that like early 2000s rap song that I just happened to be inspired by in the morning in the shower where I called Sean and I was like, Sean, put this Notorious B.I.G. song over top of this video. It doesn't perform because it's not a song that was in TikTok that's trending. Therefore, we're not getting, we're not ranking high. So we have to shift our strategy. So we're learning. And so, you know, you can fail and it's okay to fail and you should fail. And if you're not failing, yes. you're not learning, thank you're not going to grow. Thank you for, thank you for that. Thank you for calling me out on that because there's so much like, I can't fail. Like, oh no, no, no. You got it. Is the step to, that is the path to success. Absolutely. And yeah, you know what? Really if we cave, if I love we, you. Yeah. I love you. You know what though? If we cave, <laughs> if we cave, Jer, if we caved, okay. Yeah. To every single thing that people thought sucked and didn't learn from it, we'd have nothing. You know, I can't tell you how many people, when we when we had 100 followers on TikTok and we thought that, that was badass, you know, I can't tell you how many people, you know, thought it was kind of a goofy thing. You know, like, oh, he's on TikTok, like like like, like I thought, right? Like like I thought, like, these are like little children doing dances, right? And, and you know what? If we had listened to that and we hadn't poured the, the attention and the resources into it, it wouldn't be what it is today. So you know what? Failure is just the part of the equation, the formula. Necessary. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that and calling me out. I would have listened to that down the road and been like, what the heck was I talking about? Thank you. It's not just you, it's everybody. And we all have to, we all have to embrace it. You know, I fail all the time. There are things that, 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 that I fail in all the time. Okay, so talking, speaking on that, failing all the time, and then I've got one more social media question for you. And then a final question, because we're supposed to be done in a few minutes, but I think you're okay. cool on time. Um, but you are you were talking about, oh my God, now I forgot about, so then you said about failure. What was it? I was telling failure. you I failed all the time. Right, there was something, well, I'm gonna ask you this question and the other one will come back. You're talking about like, Sean was in finance and Sean is that. like, right, right. And now he's doing these amazing videos. Well, what happened is, is what happened, how did we well, learn it? How did that evolve? The real sequence, the real sequence is Sean studied finance. Mm -hmm. Sean worked at NASA. Mm -hmm. And Sean found me through a listing that I was presenting. Um, and he called me and he's like, hey, you know, are you looking for are you looking for anybody on your team? Like you know, what I admire about Sean, especially as a young person, is mm -hmm. that, you know, Sean just turned 22. That was on Friday. And, and, and as a young person, what I love about Sean is that, you know, while he may be a Gen Z, he is very much an old soul. He's not afraid to get scrappy. He's not afraid to, to, you know, he, but when I, when, but by the time he started working for me as a personal assistant, remember he was hired as a personal assistant right. by that time, you know, he had, he had worked for a, a real estate agent in New York at Keller Williams. Wow. He had done a whole host of, he had worked for a little uh, boutique, um, like clothing boutique doing uh, like, you know, outreach and, you know, minor marketing things. He had done all these things. So he came to me with so much context that I think what happened is when he entered this bubble, right? Which is kind of crazy. Like I, I, I foster weird. I foster things that are, that are, that are different, right? Like I like to add fuel to the fire of creativity yeah. and I like to sit in that kind of thing, right? Yeah. And, 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 I, and I noticed in him that he was handling the management of the social media so well as my personal assistant, I was like, okay, guess what? I'm creating a unique position on my team for you. You are now my marketing director. And he was like, oh, okay. And you, you know what? He crushes the ball. He's incredible. And we work together so well. And he just, you know, he just, um, he, he's full and of, he's full of great ideas. As marketing director, his job is, is basically like creativity. It's not. And well, his his job is, his job is, his job is pretty multifaceted because, okay. because you know what what he has to do is he has to basically speak fluent Daniel Hyder, which means he has to be scrupulously um, glued into every teeny tiny detail, every little word. 
-hmm. has to be scrupulously involved in photo editing, in video editing, in uh, print ad editing. He has to be able to communicate what, who my brand is, you know, to the world. Um, he has to yeah. figure out what doesn't fit in our box. You know, yeah. he, he, as much as he knows what's great, he also knows what isn't great. And that's something that you who know, knew he a has finance learned. Guy? Sorry? Who, who knew a finance guy? I mean, finance guy is the guy who's doing that. You know what, though? I think there are a lot of people, especially young people, who went to college, you know, with, with the idea of doing something that maybe their parents you know, thought was a, a great idea, or maybe they thought was a great idea that they get out into the real world. And they're like, you know what? Like, I actually love doing this. And I can and be lucrative. Yeah. And I can make a career out of it. Yeah. You know, and so, and so, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I think just embracing the, you know, the, 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 the crest of the wave that is the evolution of our industry is something that will carry forward the leaders in our industry so much further, um, rather than 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 ignoring it or saying it's not happening or 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 not trying to you know participate in it because those are the folks that fall behind and 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 not 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 that you've lost all hope if you're one of those people that's fallen behind, you you can get back on the crest mm -hmm. and, and you you gotta try. And, and you, if you don't have a Sean, if you're not as insane as I am, and you're thinking about, about songs in your head while you're also looking at somebody and listing their house, <laughs> you know, it's okay. You just do what works for you and try to create content that works for the people that, um, that are following you. And, and, and that hopefully that's just kind of fun and, and something you would want to watch. That's a great advice. I love that advice. So I'm just running through because I like randomly was writing one more consistency. You talk about consistency, but what does that really mean? To some people, like one post a month might be consistent, and that is consistent if it's once a month. But well, I have to say, you know, it really is. Well, I think I think it's in, in the matter of how you define consistency on the global on the sort of global media you know spectrum. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, as I was just as I was drawing that comparison about the you know the 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 smartphone being today's television. You know, with all the channels that exist on television, you got, you know, not only do you have HBO, you got HBO Espanol, HBO Family, HBO, you know, Kids, you got HBO and, you know, Black and White, you got HBO Max, you got all these channels, there's all this, this, this distraction, right? And so you got to cut through the distraction by stating and restating who you are and what you're about and what your channel is about so that you can give those people something consistent to look forward to, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I think that, you know, hey, if you're posting something once a month and that's consistency for you, then great. At least you're doing something, right? Yeah. But if you want to, if you want to ratchet that up, mm -hmm. I challenge you to post something, you know, twice a day on one, you don't have to go, you don't have to do the whole gamut of, of, of channels like we do. You can say, all right, Facebook, because the Facebook is a broadly used medium that a lot of your listeners, I'm sure, are using. So, okay, Facebook is mine, right? right. I'm going to post two or three things every single day, and, 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 and I'm going to make sure that I not only like everybody's comments, I'm going to love them. I'm going to put a little heart, right? And I'm going to say thank you, or I'm going to give you, a, at minimum, a little, like, you know, this emoji, right? Yeah. Right, and, and so I think where people get it confused is that they think these channels are for, and while you of course are self-promoting in a lot of ways and you're building your brand, you know, I think people get lost in sort of that, um, you know, that me, 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 me. And when somebody takes the time to say, wow, you are awesome. Or wow, that, you know, like you were such a beautiful baby. Today I commented on an old post when I was a little baby and all these people started, you know, commenting and I was like, thank you so much. You know, I mean, you know, so you just, you, you, you just have to be committed to, to, if you're going to get on the platform, you got to really be on it and you got to really engage. Well, if you're going to go to the party, like attend the party, don't stay in the you, corner. And you better be wearing a cocktail dress, right? Better be dressed better be wearing, If it's a cocktail party, now, if it's a picnic, <laughs> and depending on where the picnic is and what time of year it is, I mean, you know, changes everything. That's right. Oh That's my right. gosh. Okay. So as we close out, what is your, what is like the one, the one 
my my camera like is tilting slowly throughout the whole interview it's driving me nuts I'm gonna move it anyway yeah. what is the one thing what do you let's do this your top three tips on building out and maximizing your social media whether you're just getting started or you're going and running you just want to maximize it even more um don't overthink the content mm -hmm. um you know if you if you know i think i think people let the perfection get in the way of just putting out just a piece right and 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 um and then and then number two would be um you know stick to a stick to a consistent sort of um lane right commit to posting at least once or twice a day right commit to that mm -hmm. right and just and then number three is you know make sure the content is 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 unique to you right make sure the content is unique to you give them something that only jer metcalf is going to give them Right? right, like funny. Exactly. You've got this great Southern drawl. You, 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 you make me laugh. You know, you, you, you. I, I can feel your personality, right? And it's unique to you. Right. And, 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 and so right. don't try to be me. Don't try. I am me, right? Don't try to be me. Yeah. Be you, you know. And, and, and if, and if that, and if that, and if that you is, is, is like, you know, you are like obsessed with the best closets, right? Like. Hi, my name is Jer Metcalf, and I'm going to take you into the most amazing closet today. Follow me this way. Like, and your whole thing is like, I'm going to show you the most amazing closets in all of Atlanta, Georgia. Let that be your thing. But it's got to be real. What is your passion? Yeah, what is your passion? Nobody my passion. Thinks everybody, not who, who does everybody want me to be? Mm -hmm. That's so common. But like, who are you? Because yeah. people love to read you more than any you you could ever make up. Definitely. Definitely. And, and you know, um, yeah, that's, that, that, that's it. Like make it, make it, make it, make it something that no one else can replicate. I mean, sh sure. Other people will try to, to, if you get, if you get wind beneath your sails, people are going to replicate you. It's going to happen. And it's a great, it, it's a great, um, you know, it, it's a great nod to you being able to, to do it right. But, but, but they'll never, ever be able to really do it exactly the way you do because they don't have your vision, Jer. They don't have your sense of humor. They don't have your world outlook. They don't have, they don't have that. And that's not for sale. So if you make it you and you make it interesting, it's gonna be really hard to replicate and duplicate and it'll be fun hopefully and, and, it'll, and it'll be different. And it'll be something that your, your people will start to know you for and, and hopefully it. it'll, it'll make you happy. I love it. All right, what's the one thing we should take away before we close out? What's the one thing you hope everybody listening remembers from our interview? Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no I have no, a question. No. One more. But like, so on TikTok, I guess because you're picking the music or selecting the music from, you don't have to worry about copyrights because that's not happening on Instagram, is no, it? No, you know, listen, I think, I, you, to be serious, the one the one thing that I would say is, you know, just start. You know, just yeah. start. Just start. Just 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 surprise yourself and 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 be a little vulnerable. And you know, who cares what people are saying? You know, I I remember there were so many people who didn't get on Instagram back when because they thought it was for the kids. You know, mm. and. And, and and you know what? That sure has changed, hasn't it, Jer? Everyone's on Instagram. And you know, what's happening is I feel like the the content that's out there, it's making our adults in, a, in the older generation more connected to the younger generation. I mean, I mean, I'm sure how many people out there that are listening to this, I can't see your hands, but but I'm how many people right now listening to this, okay? have had their grandmother send them a heart emoji or, or an emoji of any, of any kind, right? The thing is, is that we have influence on the world and, 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 and hopefully that, that influence, um, you know, in, inspires people 
to, to, to be themselves a little bit more, to, to, to connect with a, a broader community. You know, especially right now, I'm sitting here talking to you on this Zoom. You know, Jerry, we're not in front of each other. Um, and, and, and right now it's a really difficult time for people. Why not connect with people digitally in a way that's gonna make them laugh, make them smile, make them nod their head, make them go, wow. You know, that's what I leave you with. There's no reason not to have fun. Agreed. Cheers. Daniel, thank you. You're awesome. Good to see you. You too. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to the Jerry Metcalf podcast, where top real estate agents tell how they do it. If you like this episode, please share it with friends. To find more episodes, search Jerry Metcalf podcast on any platform for podcasts or go to jerrymetcalfpodcast.com. That's J-E-R-E-M-E-T-C-A-L-F podcast.com. Podcast.